Hey there, Bipti here. Welcome to another short tutorial about Mindless Tree Logic. This time I want to show you for loops nested in for loops. There was a question about this in one of the past tutorials. First of all, we will need two variables. I'm going to call this like outer counter because this is the outer loop. And then we're going to create an inner counter. And by the way, these can be named anything. I just like the names outer and inner because I know then, you know, oh, this is the inner loop, this is the outer loop. Then uh, we need to go to up to a certain amount, right? So I want to like have a maximum inner, well, like let's start with outer. I want the outer to go up to 10 and I want the max inner to go up to well, maybe 50 or something. Um, you see, this is, these names don't matter. <laughs> you can name them anything you want. It really is, it doesn't matter, but this is what I chose because this is what works for me. All right, then we will need to do something. Namely, I want to print the value of the counter out. Oh, I messed up out a counter. I want to print it and I want to flush it to message one. And in the same case, I want to print the inner counter. And I want to flush it as well, but this time to message two. These don't exist yet. We will create them in, in a second. Now, here comes the magic. Um, this is basically the first for loop. So first we're taking care of the inner for loop, the one which is inside of the outer one, if this makes sense. So we want the inner counter to go up by one, just copying this over. And I want it to come up by one. And then we are going to say, well, you know, the inner counter, uh, is it smaller than the max inner value? If it's smaller, then we want to continue looping, right? Then we go right back to the beginning of the loop, namely this one, where we start printing stuff. So if it's bigger, what we want to do instead is we want to, we could do it a different way, but I think this, this could be, this could be easier to understand. So when we are done, we are setting the inner counter counter <laughs> typos, my nemesis. We're setting the inner counter to zero because we're starting over in the, from the beginning, basically, then we are setting the outer counts. Outer counter, we are incrementing it by one. And basically the same thing as with the other one, we are, say, we are saying, well, is the outer counter smaller than max outer? If it is, we're just going to get right back at the be to the beginning of the loop because then we like start the inner loop once again. But if it's not, well, if it's not, we're done. If it's not, we're going to just finish the program and then it's going to start all from the beginning. Um, let's see how it works, right? It will not work because we don't have messages yet. Let's create one message and a second message and link both of them up. So this is counting up to 50. This is like the inner counter and this is the outer one. 50. 50. And if we if we look here, like yeah, we wanted the inner counter to go to 50, and it's going to go and then it's done. When it's like up to 50, then the outer one is going to go plus one. Now I'll start the inner one again. And this is two nested for loops. To be honest, it's really hard to read, right? Because um, you need to think in jumps. You need to say, well, we are starting here in the beginning because this is this is like the part which is getting executed inside the inner, inner loop, which is inside the outer loop. And then like every single time we're going to start over at the beginning of the inner loop, except if we are at the, at the end, then we go towards the outer loop and increment it by one. And then, well, uh, anyway, the result is it kind of works, right? Like the inner counter goes up to 50, the outer one goes up to 10, uh, up to 9, and when it's when it's bigger than 9, then the whole program starts again, and we see 
it starts over at zero and this one goes very very fast and this is about it so <laughs> i think this is my most confusing video to date but i hope some of you learned how these nested for loops work and i'll see you in a future video bye